Now, international reports this week revealed that a landmark scientific paper claimed that claimed to debunk two decade slowdown in global temperatures uh, used dodgy data um, that was rushed out to influence the global leaders ahead of accepting the Paris Climate Agreement. What they're basically saying in English um, is that some dodgy data was used. They get the uh, the document out before the Paris Climate Conference to have an impact, mm. and they're basically saying there was no pause or hi- hiatus, mm-hmm. as they call it, but pause is what mm. we call it, in temperature rises. And uh, a former, by the way, and I have had communication from listeners who have pointed to other other articles saying that's not true. Right. So as I, and as I say, very hard to find the truth anywhere here mm. because there are so many lies around. A former top scientist turned whistleblower from America's National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Uh, by the name of Dr. John Bates, told the Daily Mail newspaper in the UK that the report claimed the pause in global warming never existed. However, it was based on misleading, unverified data. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a chat to Dr. Howard Brady. And um, a matter of fact, I actually bought his book about a week or so ago. Dr. Howard Brady is the author of Mirrors and Mazes. And by the way, that is the name of his website as well, mirrorsandmazes.com.au. It's a guide through climate change debate. And I think basically it's read for, uh, written for the general public. Ordinary people can understand it. It's not a technical thing. I hope it's not. I haven't got that Mm -hmm. far into it yet. Uh, Good morning, Howard. Oh, good morning. Uh, Good morning. Welcome to the world of climate confusion. I, I, we've been here for about 10 years. We're already you. there, Doctor. You know, I, I swore a couple of years ago that I would never buy another book on a global warming, ever, because I had a whole shelf full of them. We had a clean out at home. I got rid of most of them. And for some reason, I read about your book, heard about it, and blow me down, I've put my money down and bought another one. So I've got oh, your book. You. Yeah, we've had 60,000 hits in the last week, or 64,000 hits on that site. That's yeah, how oh, angry good. people are. Yes. Right. Now, can you tell us about this? Was it really dodgy data? What did they do? Or are the people saying, no, that's not true? So what are we to well, believe here? Okay, they did three things. First of all, they ignored the NASA satellite data, which is totally independent from the land and sea surface data, data and that shows as a pause, and that's run by the University of Alabama. So they ignored that. That's been running since 79. It clearly shows a pause. The second thing, they took the ocean sea level temperature data, which is collected by buoys or by ship intakes, and they adjusted the data. So they adjusted the buoy data, which is the best, upwards to the ship intake data. That created a bit more warming. So they increased the warming in the period between 2012, and then they compared it. And this is a weird thing to the period 1951 to 2000. But the warm period then was actually between 1975 and 2000, and 51 to 75 was 24 years of climate temperatures going slightly down. All right, now can I ask you you this? This is starting to sound a bit to me like that word that we'd never heard before until the Weather Bureau talked about it, homogenisation, where they look at all sorts of old historic figures and then they start to, what would you do, adjust them? Is this what they've well, been doing? It's not, it's not quite adjustment because they took the wrong period uh, in the past to compare it against the start with. So they got that gradient down a bit and then they did, you're right, adjust the 2012 upwards a bit. Mm. So that was adjusted up by about 0.04 Celsius per decade. The period before was adjusted uh, <coughs> downwards. So they got them close to each other and said, hey, there's no pause. Hey, presto, there's yeah. no pause. It's like the hockey mm. stick, wasn't it? They got they got rid exactly. of the, uh, the medieval warm yeah. period. Yeah, well, well, that guy's in Australia at the moment trucking around, Michael Mann. Yeah. And, uh, hey, there was a the quote, got to tell you, there's a quote in, I think it was the Sydney Morning Herald, where else, uh, where he says it's so hard to talk out against climate sceptics. I've got to say, it's the other way around. Absolutely, and they're calling us climate deniers, and we're not denying climate change. No. We're just saying that CO2 is not the puppet doing all the changing. Yeah, uh, Doctor, uh, these facts that were changed, they were changed by scientists, weren't they? People who, of, of, uh, uh, who study these things and are in the global warming business, and uh, uh, but, but they were changed by legitimate people, weren't they? Well, you say that, but then you look at what they've done and what Dr. Bates said in his article, and he was in charge of their climate database for 10 years, 
these blokes, every turn of the step, every step they could take that had a warning bias, they took it. Mm. And these people think they're going to save the world because if they can show these things are happening and CO2's in charge, then they can promote carbon trading and all that type of stuff. And they are the world's saviors. But, but this, is fr- this is fraudulent. It's out yeah. and out fraud, isn't it? Yeah, that's it what is, you call it. Uh, in the business world, you call it deceptive conduct. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. oh, is that what right. they call now, it? Now, what are we to believe if there has been this pause... Uh, since about, I think it was from about 1998 or yep, something. it was. What yeah. are we to make of it? What are our listeners to make of it? When we turn on the radio and you hear it on the news all the time, ah, oh, 2016 was the hottest year on record. 2015, the hottest year on record. Um, and, you know, it, it's catastrophe everywhere you look. What are we to make of all that? Well, I'll tell people, just relax. Human beings have been through this before. Uh, in the Roman warm period, there was no glaciers on the Alps, and Hannibal crossed the Alps with 80,000 soldiers and elephants. <laughs> so it could warm a bit more, but cheer up, it'll turn around. That's in the Roman period. Yeah. And where where are we heading? Now, we, we all agree that the climate does change, and we've come in and out of ice ages and all sorts of things. Where, where do we sit at the moment? Are we on the way into an ice age or coming out of an ice age? What's the story? Well, no, that's a long way away. Into, between ice ages is between 17 and 28,000 years, but yeah. inside that, we've got ups and downs and the warming periods normally last about 400 years right and even the russians who say that we could have a coal spike in the warming period in the next 30 years say after that we're going to warm again yeah so, so what you're saying it doesn't go in a straight line it doesn't go straight down or straight up no not at all and you've got to remember that a few thousand years ago maria had the same temperature as byron bay which meant that their winter uh, minimums were five degrees more i mean Cheer up! I mean, we've got to live with this. All right. So, so what do you what do you say? Uh, does man? Um, we we agree that the climate changes. Does man have a catastrophic catastrophic effect on what's happening, or what do you, what do you make of it all? Absolutely not. I mean, the CO two effect is very small, and each increase of CO two logarithmically has a lesser and lesser effect. Mm. Um, we're actually recovering from that ice age around 1650 to 1700, much like a human being recovering from a severe operation. Yeah, mm. that's, what I, that's what I was making the, the point before we're coming out, going in. I didn't think it was going to happen tomorrow, you know what I mean? It'd no, be a long, no. long, long way off. <laughs> so so what's, what's at stake here, uh, Doctor? Is it, uh, is it money, finance? Yeah, yes, is money, it uh, money and power. people's reputations, power? What is at stake? Well, these people genuinely believe that unless we reduce CO2, we're going to fry. They, so, they, they really believe that. Yeah, they, they do. And, but what's interesting that John Lovelock, who wrote the Gaia hypothesis yeah. and was a firm believer, he changed his mind and said, look, if I was right, we'd be frying by now. I have to admit I was wrong. Yeah. We need other people <laughs> to have the guts of Lovelock to say, yeah. look, We've taken it too far. Look, I've I got to be honest with you. I think it's more than people believing this. This is also about money, and it's about almost like an international version of socialism, if you like. That is that the, the developed countries like Australia giving money to mm. other countries, uh, our hard-earned tax money is taken off us and given to other countries to fight so-called climate change. That's, that's oh, I think I think that's... And part of it's about control, and you can see where the United Nations have got their bib in this all along the way. Oh, absolutely. So the third wheel see this a way of getting money. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. And even the Pope's on that bandwagon now, which is a tragedy. Mm. Mm. All right. Thank you very much. So you're convinced that it was the dodgy data, uh, and there are stories going backward and forward each way to say it was, it wasn't, it was, it wasn't. It wasn't just the dodgy data. Even the way they compared it to the past was dodgy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your time. And I'll, I'll direct our listeners to your website. It's Mirrors and Mazes, all one word, mirrorsandmazes.com.au. Yeah. Yes, and, and the, the response from the public has been absolutely amazing. So yes, I, I would imagine. Uh, not, not a problem. Excellent. Thank you, Howard. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Howard. Thanks for your time.